So good afternoon, all of you. Hope you can hear me, all of you. Emma, yes? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Chalo. So we will do internal capsule today. So then we will do the part of the thing which is left over yesterday's topic at the end. So what is internal capsule? It's a large band of fiber situated in the inferior medial part of each cerebral hemisphere. So I'll show you how it looks. See here. Before we go to this picture, I'll take you to some more pictures which give us correct idea how does it look. Also internal capsule. So in yesterday's class also in many times we have seen the position of internal capsule, no? Do you remember? Or, uh, coronal section of the brain picture is required. Okay, let me see once. So all of you are able to see there is a coronal section of brain here, the horizontal section which has been taken. Yes, ma'am. Huh. So this picture will help us to understand clearly the exact location of internal capsule. We are seeing only half of the cerebral hemisphere. This side we will have remaining half. That means this is the right half of the cerebral hemisphere. This side we will have left half of cerebral hemisphere. So now when we see the cerebral hemisphere, we know the outer area is called as cortex and inner area is medulla, isn't it? So in the cortex area, you are finding we have gray matter outside and white matter inside. So, isn't it? So inside the white matter also, we, we will have collection of gray matter. The blue color, the gray color, the black color, whatever has been shown, it is shown within the white areas. That means within the white matter, we have collection of gray matter, which is basically called as basal ganglia. Basal mm -hmm. ganglia. So in the basal ganglia, we have certain components. So this first component, which looks little gray in color is thalamus. Okay. Above this, we will have the caudate nucleus. Okay, then you are finding this blue in color. This structure is the, what is this? We have lentiform nucleus. Okay. Okay. So, thalamus, caudate nucleus, lentiform nucleus. When we look ma into the, yes. Which section is this, ma'am? This is coronal section. It's written like horizontal section here through tail encephalon. Okay. okay. So, you are, you are finding a V-shaped area here. 
Yes, ma'am. This VPF area is nothing but the internal mm. capsule. Now, mm. I hope you understood the exact position. Where do we have internal capsule? Okay. Now, mm. when we study the tracts also, nearby areas, whatever are there, they will be. We will be having the ascending and descending tracts. Now, let us go back to our PowerPoint. Now, after knowing this, it becomes easy for you now to understand what we are. Now, see here. Now, are you able to see the PowerPoint slide now? Boundaries and yes, parts. Okay. So we have see this is the uh, internal capsule of right side. We are seeing exclusively only on right side. So this hmm. V-shaped area, which is actually passing the tracks. We have ascending tracks and we have descending tracks. So this area is the area which is called as the internal capsule. So now let us see the definition. It's a large band of fibers. That means we have ascending fibers going that route, descending fibers also passing through that route only. Situated in the inferior medial part of each cerebral hemisphere. In horizontal section of brain, it appears V-shaped with its concavity directed laterally. Okay, so that means this is V-shaped and this is convexity, sorry, concavity which is directed laterally and this is convexity which is directed close to the midline. I hope okay. you understood the orientation. Yes, okay. Now if you just take the relations of this internal capsule, like uh, inferomedially it is related to thalamus. This area is thalamus and superomedially it is related to which structure? Caudate nucleus, head of the caudate nucleus. Then laterally, it is related to which structure? Lentiform. lentiform. Okay. We have certain subdivisions of the lentiform nucleus. What are those? We have globus pallidus situated medially and putamen, which is situated laterally. Okay. And whatever is present outside to this. Uh, like lentiform nucleus, this white matter area, this is called as external capsule. Okay, external mm -hmm. capsule. As we, as we move more outside, we have claustrum. Claustrum, this part of the brain is called as claustrum. Okay, these mm -hmm. boundaries are clear? No, it, it's quite easy. But see, internal capsule, it contains fibers going to and coming from cerebral cortex. Going to means mm -hmm. what? Ascending tracks. Coming from mm -hmm. means what? Descending tracks. Descending. Ascending tracks are coming. Sensory. Uh, very good. Sensory tracks, where are they related to? Area number 3, 1, oh, 2. Three and sensory two. cortex. Yeah. Very good. Mm -hmm. uh, go, like that is uh, going to. Descending four. Uh, coming from cerebral cortex is area number 4. Yes, motor. Yeah, motor. Uh, so whether they are ascending tracks or whether they are descending tracks, the gateway is internal right. capsule. Okay. So it's compared to a narrow gate where the fibers are densely crowded. That's the reason if there is any small lesion also in this capsule, it can give rise to widespread derangements of the body. Okay. So the internal mm -hmm. capsule is divided into what parts? Now see this is the anterior limb. This is posterior limb. The bend between these two limbs is genu. Okay. Then we have mm -hmm. the other parts like retro lentiform part. Okay. Sub means below, retro means behind. Okay, below yes. the posterior limb, we have the sublentiform part, and behind the posterior limb, we have it retro lentiform part. Okay, though it's not a 3D picture, no, that's why it's written continuously. So the parts are anterior limb, genu, posterior limb, sublentiform part, and retro lentiform part. Okay. No, exactly. No, see, just yesterday there was a word called as corona radiata. Hope you remember. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Now, suppose this is brain stem. Okay. And this is our internal capsule. So, supposingly, these are ascending tracks. Okay. They are going through the, this is our gate, going through the internal capsule and fanning out in the cerebrum. Similarly, descending tracks, they are also passing through the internal capsule okay after converging in the form all the radiating fibers are converging in the uh, internal capsule and then they are moving towards the brain stem and spinal cord those are the descending tracks okay that means mm -hmm. the tracks which are going up are coming down generally we will see like ascending and descending tracks in each limb table is given now first basically let us try to understand the basic concepts okay 
now see this is let's go in the form of table it becomes easy i want every one of you to learn this table and put it in your own words it becomes very easy now fibers in the internal capsule we know we have descending are the motor tracts we also have ascending tracts and we should know the blood supply okay this table is complete in fact now coming to anterior limb which is the anterior limb here this one it is between mm. what and what between uh, the chordate uh, nucleus chordate nucleus very good between the lentiform and chordate nucleus so in the anterior limb the motor tracts are frontopontine fibers a part of cortico ponto cerebellar pathway okay the uh, uh, like ascending are the sensory tracts we find in anterior limbar anterior thalamic radiations fibers from anterior and medial nuclei of thalamus okay so uh, now coming to blood supply see this is the circle of willis we will be discussing detail later basically this is internal carotid artery the internal carotid artery will have anterior cerebral artery this side we have middle cerebral artery okay posterior cerebral artery is a branch of basilar artery so between the middle and posterior cerebral arteries we have posterior communicating artery between the middle uh, between the two anterior cerebral arteries we have anterior communicating artery so all together it forms a circle which is circle of willis now why are we talking about this now is see this is anterior limb and we know this is genu and this is the posterior limb the anterior limb is receiving the blood supply from which artery anterior cerebral artery through the branches like artery of recurrent branch then recurrent branch of anterior hmm? uh, uh, see this is the recurrent branch of anterior cerebral branch of anterior cerebral artery of recurrent branch so these are the this is the blood supply of anterior limb similarly we have genu genu is receiving blood supply from which part middle cerebral artery of course you need mm. to practice this diagram beta very very important okay mm. so we are finding directly branch of internal carotid artery branch of posterior communicating is there okay and branches of lateral and medial striate arteries now this is the posterior limb so in the posterior limb Uh, we are again you just memorize what all branches are given here you try to memorize them okay so this becomes easy for you you also practice this diagram because do it's up to you but not so mandatory this diagram mm. is very important which see try to draw more diagrams if your content is tabular and if you elaborate it little also you will get more marks only because internal capsule is an essay question both in mm. anatomy and physiology okay beta so Um, like without fail practice this you choose which is easy for you either this or this this picture is actually showing tracts also but if you think tracts are too much then at least you draw this picture this is enough the first one okay so if you can draw a rough picture you need not give all labelings like a concepts it shows like you know the concepts better you can show this picture also okay Mm -hmm. then draw this table without fail you should know what are the tracts we have in anterior limb then uh, like uh, genu posterior limb sublentiform and retrolentiform part be thorough with what are the ascending and descending tracts here okay mm -hmm. then now coming to the clinical anatomy lesions of internal capsule are usually vascular what do you mean by vascular that means if any of these blood vessels are blocked suppose this uh, the branches which are coming from anterior cerebral or direct internal carotid or posterior cerebral whatever blood vessels if they are blocked obviously this particular area of internal capsule will not be receiving any blood supply okay the blocking is usually occurring due to thrombus or embolus blood clot is called as thrombus and if the blood clot is starting to move in the blood circulation and if it is struck somewhere here in the branches you call it as embolus okay mm. so now obviously see why this internal capsule is important because it's a narrow gate if the gate is open then only the tracks will be able to go up or come down isn't it such a, that means everything is mm. like all collected there only that means it is it an area where you mm. have concentration of all tracks 
So if any tract is damaged, obviously that particular, see we have frontopontine, imperitopontine, occipitopontine, temporo, so many tracts are there. If these are damaged, that particular function will not be taking place. Whatever tract is controlling, whatever type of sensory or motor function that will be completely lost. Okay, though it's a small area, but it will lead to large uh, derangements. Okay, so lesions of internal capsule are usually vascular due to involvement of medial and lateral striate branches of middle cerebral artery that means in the genu area middle part they give rise to hemiplegia that is the paralysis of the half of the body okay especially we know it is opposite half of the body because we know the pyramidal tracts are decussating decussating means crossing over we will see the Spinothalamic tra tracts are also crossing over. That's the reason we have been studying daily almost right half of the cerebrum is controlling left half, the, left half of the body and vice versa. Okay, so here you will see a paralysis of one half of the body, even face is also involved. So it is an upper motor neuron type of paralysis. What do you mean by upper motor neuron? That means the journey of uh, yesterday i have talked about certain neurons so first order second order third order neurons mm -hmm. so the mm -hmm. journey which is actually starting from the motor cortex mm -hmm. okay now you should come down this is these are descending tracks better motor tracks mm -hmm. motor word is used from the mm -hmm. motor area the motor cortex area number four from there mm -hmm. till the journey which is uh, spinal cord anterior horn mm. of the spinal cord so from uh, from the starting point to the anterior horn of the spinal cord the journey of the tracks is basically called as upper motor neuron okay when these blood mm. vessels are blocked this upper motor neuron type of paralysis is occurring because of the damage to the descending tracts especially this artery you are finding see this is um, like here you will have one artery it's not labeled here okay but you will find in the genu area so larger lateral striate artery which is actually called as charcot's artery of cerebral hemorrhage okay lateral striate mm. let me check yes better this one okay lateral and medial striate arteries sometimes artery of cerebral hemorrhage itself can come as a three marks question okay so then what are we mm. going to write so that is nothing but the lateral striate artery which is getting blocked or it is ruptured due to in hypertension or it is blocked due to thrombus or embolus then you will see that particular area of the genu is damaged and you will see the motor mm -hmm. tracts are damaged and it will lead to upper motor neuron type of paralysis hemiplegia okay then mm -hmm. see this is posture left-sided hemiplegia this is okay mm. no See, uh, this is actually, I will take you to the remaining slides before I come to the end of this. Okay, because I will take you in the other day. Um, Many things I wanted to discuss with the help. Yes, Beta Hema? Uh, Ma'am, is this contralateral hemiplegia or ipsilateral? It is contralateral, not ipsilateral. It is oh. opposite half of the body because there is decussation of pyramidal tracts in the no. brain stem no. in the no. middle of middle of the okay mm. so this is i will just take a fast review of what we have already discussed okay mm. cerebrum i gave you a detailed lecture what are the surfaces borders poles pictures are good i just wanted to show you this is how it mm. looks okay in the brain parietal lobe frontal lobe we have discussed salsae gyrae how beautiful they are see this powerpoint i will definitely today i am going to share everything for sure okay Okay. So this uh, is BDC's PowerPoint only and you need not buy any book. You can read from here. I will share. Okay. Mm. So what is insula? You remember I told you if you just open the lateral. If you remove lateral. Uh, Alcas will find insula. Uh, there is fifth, hidden uh, fifth, uh, lobe. Hidden lobe, fifth yeah. lobe is nothing but mm. insula. Insula lies deep in the floor of the lateral fissure surrounded by circular sulcus and overlapped by adjacent cortical areas the lips what you are mm. separating no of the lateral sulcus mm. you call them as opercula okay, okay. so insula can see this is the insula most of it see we mm -hmm. should always know which is anterior and which is this is the frontal 
area, this is the parietal, this mm. is occipital, this is temporal. So this is frontal operculum. Mm. This is temporal lobe, no? That's why this is temporal operculum. Again, if you observe mm. here also, we are finding the salsa and gyre, isn't it? The depressions mm. are called as salsa and these in between the elevations are called as gyre. Okay. So mm. the uh, gyre which are long in size, they are called as gyre longa. The gyre which are smaller, smaller, small, small in size, they are called as gyre brevia. Okay. And there is one mm. sulcus exactly in the center of this insula, which you call it as sulcus centralis. Sulcus centralis. Insula itself can be a five marks or three marks question. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, uh, like see here, insula lies deep in the floor of the lateral sulcus and the fissure surrounded by circular sulcus. And circular sulcus is the one which is in the middle. Okay. Mm. Mm. Then we have overlap by adjacent cortical areas the opercula always operculum means lid insula comprises of frontal operculum and also temporal operculum parietal uh, tempo parietal operculum is which side button this one no, uh, this is parietal okay frontal parietal temporal opercula lids okay okay the role of anterior insular cortex is in olfaction and taste Okay, olfactory bulb, olfactory tract, medial and lateral stray that will be actually relaying in the insular region. So, role of posterior insular cortex that means here only we are dividing into this is anterior and this is posterior. Anterior on the inferior aspect of the frontal lobe of the brain, we have olfactory bulb, olfactory tract. That's the reason anterior is concerned with the olfaction smell, whereas posterior okay. part is concerned with the yesterday we have talked about vernic speech area right yes yes ma ha, so this area is concerned with language function okay, okay. So gare, we have discussed much in detail so i want see this is for essay question better this slide you can take a screenshot from your laptops or phone okay so superior lateral surface we have frontal lobe parietal lobe temporal lobe occipital lobe okay all these mm. we should know what are the sulci present what are the gyre present okay this is take the screenshot also medial surface and inferior surface it's not so like uh, important but still this mm. the, the previous one always comes in is as an essay question okay okay this is the medial surface what is the question ma'am like how will the superolateral surface of the cerebrum better describe the sulci and gyre present on the superolateral surface of the brain now, because it mm. is for 15 marks no, from your batch onwards, so maybe functional mm. areas also will be included with applied anatomy. Okay, I, I think we should draw the like nice diagram and write the table, that should be enough. Uh -huh. uh, elaborating is always required, but now. Uh, okay, okay. okay. Uh, see, half an hour you check how much you can give. Your maximum presentation you can give half an hour is for essay. Okay. You should one LAQ should write for half an hour, ma'am. Mm, half an hour. You can use not more than that. Otherwise, you will be running short of uh, time for other questions. Other questions. Okay. Time management is important. No better. Once we finish yes, the entire syllabus, then we will discuss when we start papers. Okay. Okay, ma'am. Uh -huh. mm. So this is medial surface. This is inferior surface. Okay. So functional or cortical areas. We have motor area. All these I have discussed better. This this PowerPoint I'll uh, share with you. Like this is, uh, what is this motor? Homunculus. Depending sensory. upon uh, sensory and motor, both will be there. Motor, For now, yeah. this is motor. Okay. Mm. Body's representation is upside down. Face representation mm. is quite bigger. Okay. See, mm. practice this diagram for superior lateral surface. Okay. Okay. So mm. you have all functional areas here. So this, uh, this is also for medial. Actually, this is helpful for you for two subjects, both in anatomy and physiology. Okay, Vita? Mm. So now the best part of this uh, Chaurasia, what I keep telling you is this, Vita. This table, see how beautiful. You can take a screenshot again. Okay. So frontal lobe, parietal lobe, mm, occipital lobe, temporal lobe. What are the... See? Area number four is motor area. Location, we know it is present in the present. MS, I said, right? M is motor mm -hmm. area. That is area number four. Where is it present? Precentral gyrus and paracentral lobule. Paracentral lobule, I told you, it is present on medial surface. Isn't it? Mm -hmm. 
body's representation is upside down and it is controlling voluntary activities of opposite half of the body. Contralateral mm. paralysis and Jacksonian fits. Suppose if this area is damaged. So like that, we have other functional areas like frontal, parietal, occipital, temporal. Take screenshot of this also. This is complete, but cerebrum is complete. Okay. Okay. Uh, it's such like easy, no? Charasia has represented it in a very easy way. Mm -hmm. Hmm. So now, summary of functions we have seen in the table. So usually after 60 to 70 years or so, there are changes in the brain. So what is happening? The size of the brain will shrink. Prominence of cell mm -hmm. cell. Um, like due to cortical shrinkage, the gyre get narrow and salsa get broad. Okay, subarachnoid mm -hmm. space becomes wider. Subarachnoid space is the space which you see below the arachnoid matter. Okay, and mm -hmm. the size of ventricles keeps growing. The size of brain mass starts little reducing. Okay, now there is a condition which is called as dementia. What grow? What grows? Something ventricle, ventricle better. Ventricles. Empty cavity filled with CSF is occupying more than the cortical tissue of the okay. brain. Okay. Mm -hmm. right. Dementia. See, as age advances, what happens? There is slow and progressive loss of memory. Okay. Intellect and personality. The consciousness mm -hmm. of the subject is normal. Dementia usually occurs due to Alzheimer's disease. Alzheimer's is severe memory loss. Changes of normal aging, they are more pronounced in parietal lobe, temporal lobe, and hippocampus. Okay? Yeah. I'll show you hippocampus. See, the salsae, gyre, everything has a, like, this is the normal brain. Okay, you are finding the size of the brain will be little shrunken and the salsae, gyre, uh, number will be reducing. See, the, the salsae are less in number and the gyre are broadening. Okay? I told you the subarachnoid space also becomes more. See, this is mm. brain mass. The brain mass size has reduced. Ventricle size will increase. Subarachnoid size will increase. These are the changes we see in Alzheimer's. Okay? Mm. All this is not required, but it will be, if you want, you can study, but not, of course, so much required. Okay? So this diencephalon I will discuss later better, like thalamus and all, it needs one complete class. Uh, like okay. yesterday, some part is left over, I will continue with that. Um, we didn't discuss carpus callosum, right? Hmm. Mm -hmm. We were doing white matter, right? So this was our topic hmm. yesterday. So we have seen short association fibers, isn't it? We have seen long hmm. association fibers, so short associations are generally connecting the adjacent cells and gyre. Long nerve ones are uh, like, like we have superior longitudinal fasciculus, inferior longitudinal fasciculus, uncinate, cingulum, everything we have studied. Okay. So yeah. apart from that small, small other names are there, but a habenular commissure, hypothalamic commissure, based on the place mm -hmm. where they are present. Okay. Um, diagrams are there, I will show you. It's a, you know the position of hypothalamus, right? Yes, ma'am. Uh -huh. Okay. Now, carpus callosum. Now, what are what is carpus callosum? It's a large commissural fiber which is connecting right and left cerebral hemisphere. Okay. So, ma'am, on the side of hypothalamus, there is third ventricle, right? Third ventricle, I'll show you very nicely better. Between the two thalami, we will have third ventricle. Okay. 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 Below the okay. thalamus, we will have hypothalamus. Okay. That clear concept I will give you once we are doing that topic. Okay. Okay. For now, what you should know now we are doing carpus callosum. Uh, see, this is the area better. This is right cerebral hemisphere and left cerebral hemisphere. Between the two cerebral hemispheres, this connecting area is carpus mm -hmm. callosum. Okay, mm. so this is largest commissural fiber. What is the difference between association fiber and commissural fiber? Commissural, they connect the two hemispheres. Right and left Association hemisphere. is between, yeah, so respect, I mean, adjacent uh, salsae, gyri and all that. Yeah, yeah, very good. Okay. So commissural fibers, the largest one is carpus callosum. Okay. Apart from that, uh, pictures uh, are not there. So in the anterior, I'll show you, but. 
see here this is the anterior aspect isn't it so at this point we will have a small connection you call it as this is the area of our anterior commissure behind you will have the posterior commissure okay commissure mm -hmm. of the fornix what is fornix also we will see abdominal and hypothalamic as the like with the help of diagrams i can show you this then corpus okay. callosum is connecting right and left uh, mm -hmm. now so see this is uh, towards the frontal pole and this is towards the occipital pole so we have rostrum genu trunk or body and the behind one is plenum okay so below rostrum you have this projection downwards which is lamina terminalis okay below the trunk there is a small partition also which is septum pellucidum when you cut this septum pellucidum this thin membrane if you just lift or cut if you have experience you will see lateral ventricle inside isn't it uh, whole water will be coming out csf nothing but okay uh -huh. Huh. so that is so corpus callosum these are the parts you know rostrum trunk and splenium so the fibers we will see in the rostrum region we have forceps major and forceps minor these are the white matter fibers which are connecting the adjacent hemispheres uh, tapetum is also there these are all fiber cells yeah see here here now you see here forceps minor what is it connecting see this is the frontal area this is the parietal area this is the occipital area isn't it so forceps minor are the white matter fibers which are connecting right and left cerebral hemispheres roughly which is situated at the point of rostrum okay so this is all trunk so in the mm. trunk region you are finding so here also you are finding the fibers okay behind we have forceps major okay forceps mm. major are bigger fibers which are actually connecting the two occipital lobes okay so these are the fibers of corpus callosum and the fibers which are passing through the trunk only for are forming corona radiata corona radiata okay mm. that is so this is corpus callosum so projection fibers these are the fibers which are connecting the cerebral cortex to other part of cns that means for example brain stem and spinal cord that means the fibers which are either ascending or descending isn't it that is mm. uh, internal capsule we have just discussed isn't it mm. so the remaining part that is the diencephalon thalamus i will discuss tomorrow okay beta okay we'll yes. stop here yes ma'am okay. Bye, ma'am.